think. Okay, guys, if I have to believe uh, YouTube, we are live with our Digital Classroom broadcast. So let's start this special episode of Digital Classroom. Well, isn't that awesome, our new intro? Today, a special episode. Normally, of course, we are online at 3 o'clock Central European time. That means 3 o'clock at our time. In your time, probably something different. But overall, normally our digital classroom is about lighting our model. It's about street photography. We have many different topics. And one of the topics that actually comes back a lot is smoke. What can you do with smoke? And recently, I actually asked you guys, like, what do you want to see in digital classroom? And a lot of you guys were like, I want to see something with smoke. Because somehow smoke is a mood maker. Smoke is something that gives you that little bit of magic in your shots. Think about food photography. Without smoke, yeah, that doesn't really look like food that you want to eat, right? Or what about toy photography? How about all those nice misty looks? Or how about model photography? Smoke is something that really transforms your shot from something that's normal to something that's wow. You know, let's go, go from zero to hero. But smoke machines, they are there in many, many different forms. You can have big smoke machines that pump out a lot of smoke, and those are very expensive. You can have some cheaper smoke machines, like, for example, 100, 200 euro range, and those smoke machines work great. The only problem is that with those smoke machines, you have to wait a long time before you actually can use them, maybe up until five minutes, and they don't perform that well. In other words, well, after about five minutes of smoke, you have to wait for another five minutes. Is that frustrating? Heck yeah, it is, because, well, the whole drive goes out of your shoot. But what if you want to shoot on location with smoke? Well, that's not really possible, too, because outside it's often way too cold to let the smoke machines warm up, and, of course, you need a power supply outside. And this is why today we do an extra episode of Digital Classroom with something completely different. Not something that you use for me. But, hey, we're going smaller in strobes, so why not go smaller in smoke machines? Today, I'm going to introduce to you guys the fog machine. Yeah, I actually had to learn to say that because English is not my native tongue. The fog machine Model S and Model B. What's the difference? Well, the S, I can pretty simple explain. That's the smaller one. That's this one. The B, however, that's the bigger one. <laughs> Normally, I would say the XL or the X, but hey, it's the bigger one. Now, if you think like, hey, this looks familiar, probably yes. But in all honesty, it's a little bit too big for that. So, yeah, that uh, looks very familiar to two other products. So, what is a smoke machine? A smoke machine is something that heats up a certain fluid and then it will become smoke. But there are many different kinds of smoke. You have some so-called haze. Now, haze is very nice. It gives you a little bit of an atmosphere, like in movies when somebody walks around with a flashlight, you see those beams of light. That's haze. You don't really see the smoke, but you see the smoke particles. Now, of course, we also have the big smoke, the big, big luscious smoke. And you know those from, for example, if somebody smokes. Or in movies, when there's a lot of smoke, you really see those curly smoke. But there's also something else, and that's called ice. And what is ice? Well, it's actually very cold smoke, and that actually fits to the floor. And that's something that I never saw in small devices before. So let me first show you what everything does. Let me switch over to this camera for uh, very quickly, so you can see what we have here. So we have a glass of coke. Let's take that out. The first thing is, of course, uh, the B. This is the B. So that's the big one, and don't worry, normally this is not attached. So this is the big one. You take off this, and now you can just fill up the container with fluid. Very simple, you just lift up this little thingy over here, and then you just fill it up with smoke, uh, with smoke fluid, of course. And then you put this back on, because let's be honest, the part in here becomes really, really hot, and it just fits all very nicely together. Now, in all honesty, I got these like two hours ago, so we still had to charge them and whatnot more. So I hope everything will work out. So this is the big one. We also have a smaller one, and it works actually the same way. So you take this one off. It's a twist system. You just fill it up with smoke fluid, and you just twist it back on. It couldn't be simpler, really. So charging, of course, USB-C. 
that's one of the main things that I think is really important. But then, let's just turn it on just for fun. This one we just slide up, and now you see the um, blue. We can't use it yet, because if you use it now, it will spill out a little bit of that material, and you don't want it. So just place this one on, and let's just see how this works. So this is the main unit now. And you can already see that gives you a tremendous amount of smoke for such a small machine. So I hope Enoweek actually um, did something with our smoke alarm. So that's one. But there's also this little device that you can put on. And now it becomes even more interesting because now you can spray from a distance. And it becomes more aggressive. So let's try that. As you can see here, now it's really like a vapor smoke. Ooh, I really like that one. Okay, let's take that one off. We also have a flexible tube, yep, so if you put that one on, you are now able to put the smoke wherever you want, but do be careful because it can get a little bit hot. So now you can just move it around, for example, just place it somewhere in between or let the smoke come from the bottom. This <laughs> oh my, what a mess. <laughs> okay, let's hope that my uh, phone is smoke protected. And this one, this is the one that I really like. So let's put that one on. There we go. And let's bring out our disco ball because, hey, let's go back to the 80s, right? And now watch this. So you just aim it at the ball and you turn it on. Now watch this. This is so cool. Isn't that just awesome? Let's do it like this. Yeah, it does smell a little bit. <coughs> okay, Phew. great. But there's more. Yes, there's more. So let's first clear this up. Phew. Phew. Okay, we also have this device, also chargeable by USB-C. Click it on, and now it becomes interesting because now we can actually turn on a van. And now you have a lot of smoke. And we're going to try this out with a model because Lois is here. So this is a bit normal. Let's put up a little bit more of the fan. Oh my, this is full power. Oh, I never saw this before. Yeah, this is cool. Oh my. Can you still see me? Oh, this is fun. Oh, so. Ooh. Okay. Now, that's fun, right? So we have a lot of different accessories. We have a lot of different options. And I think one of the most important things to realize is that when you buy a system like this, you don't buy it just to make photos of a model. You don't buy it just to create one thing. This is what I like about products. It's not a product that is a one-trick pony. You can do a lot of stuff with it. So I think today we're going to shoot some images with Lois. This is going to be a shorter digital classroom. But I think tomorrow and the days after, I'm going to try something at home with a guitar pedal, with maybe a Batman figurine or whatever. We're going to try something to create something that's a little bit more interesting than what I just did here. Now, all the systems are delivered within this beautiful box. So this is for the B and this is for the S. And the cool thing is that you can also mount them on a stand and use a freaking remote control. How about that? So if you buy two, you of course have to buy two, you always have to buy two, because if one breaks down, of course they won't break down, but then you have two from each side. So you can remote control them, and that's something that's a real big plus. Now you might think, Frank, why is that a big plus? Well, I've been working with smoke machines for many, many years, and one of the most frustrating parts is that if I have an Enoweek or a Brian or an intern, I don't have any problems, because they can control the smoke machines. But if I'm alone, how, how will I do it? Do I really have to run up and down with the smoke machine? No, of course not. We use a remote control. But our smoke machines, they can't be put on a stand. So I always have to put them on the floor and they create a lot of smoke, but I can't steer the smoke when I'm alone. And this is one of the great things I love about these smaller devices. They won't create the smoke that we have with our normal smoke machines. But we don't need that much smoke. What we need is really placeable smoke. So we need smoke on the areas where we want it. And this works like a charm. So we're going to go to our studio with our model. And one of the first things you have to realize about smoke is smoke is not that easy to light. 
a lot of people think we'll just blow in some smoke, put in some lights, and hooray, there we are. It doesn't work like that. Think about when you're driving through the fog, right, with your headlights on. What do you see? Absolutely nothing, because you see this big, white wall of smoke. That's the same thing with smoke in the studio. It acts as a diffuser, so it makes light a little bit softer. It acts as a reflector, but it also acts as a big neutral density filter. In other words, if you place lights behind the smoke, you should always light smoke from behind, it will actually absorb some of your lighting. And we're going to show you that in the studio. We're going to start out without any smoke. We're going to set up our lighting setup, and I'm going to show you how much that smoke will have impact. The problem with smoke is you can never predict it. If there's a lot of smoke between your strobe and your model, there will be a lot of reflections back on the backdrop and there won't be a lot of light hitting your model. If there's a little bit of smoke between your light and your model, a lot of that light will hit your model. So this is why we set up it for some special effects like lens flares. We're going to create something with a little bit of a backdrop lighting with our well, our a dome from a rogue, so we can actually make some sort of a sandwich light setup. You know, we can talk about it for ages. Let's just go to the studio and let's just set up and let's see what we can do. So I'm going to uh, run a commercial very quickly and then Enoic is going to take over and we're going to switch. So let me switch over for the commercial and we'll be right back. Hey guys, my name is Frank Dorov and you already completed step one. You found our YouTube channel. Now, if you look at our YouTube channel, you see that we do a lot of different stuff. We do gear reviews, we do live streams, lighting tutorials. We talk about street or product photography, but mostly it's of course aimed at model photography. And within that, there are so many options. Like for example, what is your perfect workflow? How do we teach our workshops? How do we light our model? Well, you can find everything on our YouTube channel. Now, there is one more option that I wanna share with you guys, and this one is really exciting. YouTube opened up the subscribers option, and this gives us so much more options. If you join our subscribers section, the first thing you will find out is that we uploaded a full length tutorial, more than 45 minutes talking about gear, lighting your model, choosing your right backdrops, how do we shoot tethered, how do we create my whole workflow, how do I coach my model, why do you walk around your model to create contrast. It's a jam packed episode, and you will absolutely gonna love that. But also on the subscriber section, you will find behind the scenes photos, behind the scenes videos, and of course, special dedicated live streams for the questions that you guys ask me. But there's even more. Every month, we're gonna do reviews for your images. And the fun part about this is it's not just opening that image and showing you, hey, I would have done it this way. No, we're gonna go much further. I wanna have the raw files and I wanna have the original files that you retouched. I'm gonna do a full dedicated retouch aimed at your workflow. So if you edit on the iPad, I'm gonna edit your image on the iPad. If you edit in Photoshop with plugins, I'm gonna try my best to create exactly the same workflow that you have in your studio or at home. So you can recreate those retouches without any problem because in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense to show you very fancy plugins or very fancy techniques that you can't do yourself. And that's the idea of our whole channel and the subscriber section. We want to make it possible that you at home or in your studio can create professional looking images by understanding lighting, by knowing how everything works, by knowing how colors interact, how your workflow is set up easily. So join us on our YouTube channel and of course we love it if you would join our subscriber section. It's open now and it starts at $2.99 a month. You're gonna get a lot of information for that. So join our YouTube channel and the subscriber section. Stay creative, keep shooting, and see you online. Bye, guys. Anavik, do you have the right camera now? Okay. Okay. So we set up a very simple lighting setup. It's not about lighting today. It's more about what you can do with smoke. And trust me, it's going to be fun. So we have our Gigoto small softbox with a grid to really focus the light. It's on the GT400. So I have my uh, model here. And let's just take a simple meter reading and let's just see how our lighting is set up for now. Okay. I'm shooting ISO 200 at the moment because we want to make sure that with the smoke everything comes as we want. Hey. Ah, there we go. 4.07. Okay, let's go up for 5.6. There we go. 
Okay, let's take the first shot, and that's without any extra lighting. So I just want to make sure that my main light is set up correctly, and after that we're of course going to build up the rest of the set. So, I'm going to have to focus. Okay, there we go. So again, very, very simple lighting setup, a little bit from the side to create a little bit of depth. So this is one setup. Now, of course, I love my backdrop. And what I want to do is I want to give a little bit of light on our backdrop. Now, it's always important to choose your colors wisely. Now, in this backdrop, there's a little bit of blue, actually a lot of blue. So what I have done is I'm using one of our rogue domes, and I'm going to use this to spread out the light on our backdrop. But because it's a dome, it creates an omnidirectional light source. So I'm going to aim it slightly at our model and then slightly away. So I'm just aiming it in between. So let's turn off the modeling light. We don't need it for now. There we go. It's now on one eighth. And that's our B channel, blue. So and let's go for a manual mode. And let's first put that on, let's say, one fourth. Okay. Let's take one shot to test out. OK, that's very nice. So that gives me already a little bit of an accent on my model and a really nice look on the backdrop. But let's set it up like it would normally be set up for something like this. So let's give it a little bit more. And now you're going to see in a moment <laughs> why you don't want to do this with smoke. There we go. So I really, really like this. This looks really nice. I like how the light is wrapping around her. I like the blue tint. I like that my backdrop is showing up. And this is one of the things, by the way, that I love about those Rogue products. Now, the dome literally creates that 180 degrees light. And this is what I use here. Normally, I would place one light on the backdrop and one light on my model. And because we're using that dome, I can now literally just aim. The center point will always be the brightest, but the sides will be a little bit softer in light. And that means that I have total control about how much light I want on my backdrop and how much I want on my model. The more I aim the light towards the model, the less on the backdrop, the more on the model. The more I aim it towards the backdrop, well, you figured it out, the more on the backdrop, the less on the model. On the other side, I'm using something different. I'm using a GT200 with our Rogue system, but only the gel. So that's a red gel. Now you might wonder like, hey, why always blue and red? Well, you can use all other colors, but in essence, red and blue are the two colors that give you the most emotion. Think about it, when I say red, you say love, hate, warmth, aggression, peace, whatever. When I say blue, cold, distant, future, uh, blue has so many meanings. But when I say green, there isn't really any emotion connected to green. Same with magenta, cyan, and yellow. So this is why red and blue are those strong primary colors that gives you a lot of power in your shots. So that's why we love to use those too. And they complement each other great. So let's turn on my, sec my third strobe. And yeah, with smoke, we, <laughs> we need a lot of strobes. And I'm going to aim this one at our model, but I'm going to do something a little bit tricky. I'm going to place it here, and I'm going to aim it up, and then aim it down. And maybe later on, when we have the smoke, I'm going to creep that through the smoke and create something like a backlighting. Maybe we're going to push it a little bit more forward. We'll see. Okay, with this one, the red gel also takes away a lot of light. This is why I'm shooting on ISO 200, because that light is very, very bright, the 400. Those are a little bit less bright, and I don't want to run into every, any problems. So that's why we actually lowered it a little bit. Okay, so let's turn on C. And let's, because the red one takes away a little bit more light, let's put it on full power for now. And by the way, let's turn off the modeling light of that one too. There we go. Okay. Now as you can see, the red one now literally overpowers the whole set for the very simple reason. And this is why it goes wrong. It was aimed straight at me. So the dome is aimed away from me, the other one is aimed at me. This is one of the things that goes wrong a lot, because there's something that I didn't tell you yet. Every single gel, every single modifier takes away light or adds light. Sounds a little bit weird, but if you have a really deep modifier, it will actually enhance your light output. If you have a smaller modifier, like for example as a strip or 
a grid in front of your softbox, it will take away a little bit of light. Now, when we look at the gels, they do the same thing. A really thick gel gives you a great saturated color, but it will take away light, sometimes up to three or four stops. Now, those gels are in the range of two and three stops. But there's something else that you have to realize. You have light that you aim straight at you, and you have light that you feather away. And feathered light is always a little bit softer, of course, in quality, but also gives you less light. So that light, although it's on a lesser stroke, because it's aimed straight at me, will overpower my light. Now, if you watched a lot of digital classrooms, you already know this, of course, but because we're on a different time setting at this moment, I thought, let's just explain. Okay, I'm going to move a little bit further away. So I think this looks a lot better. Actually, I think we can do it a little bit less. There we go. Okay, so, yeah, there we go. Now, I really like the shot slowers, but are we done? No. Why not? Why not? Some smoke. Some smoke. <laughs> Do you feel like smoking? Yeah. It's bad for your health, you know that, right? <laughs> let's try it. Let's give you some smoke. But let's do it with a little bit of fun. So I'm going to take this a big one. I'm going to click it back together. There we go. And I'm going to give you the small attachment. And I'm going to let you play with it. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> okay, I don't know how it works 100%, so we have to figure it out a little bit while we go. If you press twice, it will go. Press twice again, and it stops. Okay. So as soon as I say yes, you press, and then you just move it around and just be mysterious. Yeah. Be Lois. <laughs> Are you ready, Lois? Okay, yes. double click and just move it around a little bit. Nice. Cool. Okay, double click. Really nice. It stays in along. Uh, the thing is, and you saw it, right? It looked great in the previous shots, but now it looks so boring and so flat. What's going on? As soon as you start using smoke, you also want more tension in your shot. So what we're going to do is a very, very simple trick. By creating tension, you're creating contrast. Contrast and tension go hand in hand. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our main light and we're going to move that all the way to the side. Let's first take the shot without any smoke in the frame. Lower my camera angle a little bit. There we go. So now we have a totally different look, much more intense. But you don't see the eyes anymore. Is that important? I don't know. For me, in a shot like this, no. I actually like it. It gives a little bit more of an atmosphere. I'm going to go for a slightly lower angle. And I'm going to ask my model to engage the smoke. We are live. Ooh, I is that a dead gurgle? Let me. It sounds a little bit like the engine that would. Okay, one moment, guys. This can happen. Okay, there we go. There we go. It's like a Windows machine. Turn it on and off again. N don't press again. Oh. Double click. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's already empty. Ah, okay, no problem. Let's fill it up. Uh, let's do the other one. Uh, let's, on a week, fill this one up. And we're going to use the other one. Ah, of course, when it's empty, you can't. Okay, let me try something with this one. Okay, this one is okay. okay. Let's try something with this one, but just move it around and just be gentle. 
like very uh, feminine uh, poses in with smoke, you know, make it a um, little bit like Vogie. Vogie. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, turn it on. Yeah, there we go. Look at that chin up just a little bit. There we go. That's awesome. Look towards the light. Okay, put the machine in the frame. There we go. Yes, that's not. Oh, that's nice. Awesome. Nice. Hold the machine a little bit in the front. Don't aim at yourself. <laughs> okay, turn it off. Now, what would be nice is it's a little bit too much at the moment, so we're going to turn down red. And this is what I told you guys, right? When you have smoke, it reflects back, so all that light gets enhanced. It gets more and more and more. So when you set it up, tone down those lights. It should be a little bit too dark for your taste. And then as soon as you put on the smoke, it should really lighten up. What I want you to do is just aim it that way so we can see the logo. Hold it in front of you. And one step that way. Yes, and then just turn it on. And then first just move it a little bit like this and then hold it like that. And that's when I'm going to take the shot okay. and then hold it like a commercial. There we go. This is awesome, Lois. There we go. Chin. Yes. Nice. Okay, turn it off. Great. Let's see what we can do with a little bit of hazing. Hazing? Oh, wrong word. Oh, that looks really cool. Huh? Okay. Oh, it wasn't empty? No, it wasn't. Okay. I don't know what was. Uh, let's see what happens uh, now. Maybe it was um, after three minutes you have to shut it down for a few seconds. Oh, maybe it was a little bit too hot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it works again. So that's great. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually ask Brian to just spray something behind our model. So. What you do is you just press and just a little bit behind. <laughs> yep. You just fill everything up. Oh, you don't need to be that close. Just from a distance. Nice. Look at that. And that's more than enough smoke from such a small machine, guys. Can you imagine? Normally we use those really big smoke machines and look at what the small machine can do. Let's up the ante a lot. Because, well, if you can't go big, you have to go home. Luckily I live very close. So let's turn on the heat, literally. <laughs> let's do the fin. <sighs> oh, this is going to be awesome. Okay, Brian, are you ready? I'm going to turn it on the highest setting. And then when I say yes, just spray the whole bag. Are you ready? Yes. I say yes. Oh, that's a lot of smoke. That's nice. Just try a little bit on that side if you want. Perfect. A little bit in front of the model. Okay, perfect. Nice. And it's a nice quality of smoke. It's really thick. It doesn't look like much, but man, it's it's more than enough. It now it doesn't smell. Okay, let's give it a little bit more contrast from the side. Nice. Cool. Chin up just a little bit. Okay, Brian, just stop the smoke. Really, really cool. Okay, I'm going to let everything cool down a bit. I'm going to go back to the, the desktop and let's go through some of those images. And Lois, can you change for the, you know what? You know what I mean, right? Hello. We have a little surprise for you guys. So let's, um, only now I don't have any cameras on me. So Brian, can you turn that camera on me again? Okay, let me just very quickly put on something for Kelby. We'll be right back.
Hey guys, welcome in the Netherlands, Amsterdam. This is my home country and my name is Frank Dorov. If you want to learn more about studio photography, the first thing you have to understand is how do you build your own studio? There are so many problems you will encounter during the building of your studio. The size is too small, the size is too big. What do I do with the walls? And the list goes on and on and on. In this class, I will give you a lot of tips about how to build your studio, but of course, I will also show you some cool tricks with lighting, because that's of course, very vital part of your studio. So check out my class on building your studio on Kelby One. <laughs> yeah, those are awesome. Okay, um, so we have somebody on the door, so everybody's now gone, so I'm totally alone here now, so that's a total change for me. Hey, so let's take a look at some of those images and let's see what we can do with the smoke. And as mentioned before, it seems like a small machine. So the first time you see something like this, you go like, hey, that can never compete with those big smoke machines, right? It can never compete with something where, you, in essence, when we use smoke, we use smoke machines on two sides, pump everything full of smoke, and then we take the shot. When I'm honest, with this kind of smoke, it hangs around a lot longer than our smoke. So it's a little bit thicker without and this is gonna sound weird, but in our smoke machines, we have different kinds of smoke fluid. We have this really thin smoke, a little bit like haze, like what you saw with the uh, with this attachment. And we have the medium smoke, and that's what we mostly, mostly use. And that's similar to this smoke. And you also have the thicker smoke fluid, and that stays around a long time, a little bit like this amount of smoke. However, the thicker smoke isn't really usable for photography, in my opinion, because it's it's just too thick. It's it's so overwhelming, like, hey, this is smoke. Now, when I compare it to this stuff, it stays in the in the air a lot longer. So it seems like to linger around a little bit more. And that's actually also what they say in the brochure. Like it's more, it's it's longer in the air than normal smoke. And I totally agree. When you read it, you go like, yeah, sure. But then when I see it in action, I'm actually convinced. And that really helps out with an attachment like this because we don't need those two smoke machines anymore. We only need one. Okay, so let's take a look at those images. And let's see actually what I like and what I don't like about them. Uh, so let's go back. And as you can see, when we started out, we actually started out with a very, very simple image. And it looks great. Mm, but it isn't really that exciting yet. So as soon as we started adding that red, now look at this, this looks great. Okay, but it's still really flat, and overall, it doesn't really bother me when there's no smoke in there. But as soon as we start adding the smoke, you see, the smoke doesn't really add something to the story. It's nice, it's cool, it actually looks great, but it doesn't give me the effect that I want. So as soon as we start adding that light to the side, as you can see here, we're creating more contrast in the shot, and now that smoke really becomes part of the image. And with smoke, it's always, and again, it's not an excuse, but we really got the thing in like two hours before the broadcast. So I couldn't experiment with it yet. But overall, I think when, when, when we start using this for, for a few times, I think we can create some really cool shots with it. It just looks great. Look at this. And I really like that, that cold ice idea. We have a little bit too much red on the back, so we have to tone that down for the next set. this this one is cool this one is also really nice I believe this was where we used the fence on the back so this that's another thing that we do a lot of course you can make the model play with your smoke but it's also very interesting to just use it on the backdrop like for example to give it a little bit of structure like you can see here but the thing that I always do is always keep it a little bit on the front too, because you don't want your model to be against the wall of or smoke. You also want that smoke to be part of your set. So overall, it looks really, really nice. For the next shot, I think I'm gonna add extra, I'm gonna add some extra contrast actually. Look at that, really nice. Just for, 
remember, these are not really great shots. Th these are just shots that we do very quickly during a live broadcast. So don't expect miracles, but it actually looks pretty nice. Okay, so let's switch over again to our picture in picture because we have our model back. And that means that I have to get to work. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lois, that looks awesome. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change some stuff. <laughs> Everybody lost me. There we go. Lois, you look absolutely stunning. I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to create a little bit more contrast by moving this even further back. I want to create a little bit more red. So I'm going to move this one a little bit forward. Let's do that differently. Do it like this. There we go. Maybe we want it in the frame, maybe we don't. We can always judge that later. Okay. Now let's first test out how this looks. And then I have a really cool idea. Okay, look a little bit towards the light. Chin down. Oh, nice. Okay, so what I want to do, uh, Brian, mm. if you want to be my assistant, yeah. I want you to fill the head. And you just look down, and then as soon as it works, I'm going to take the shot. Okay, move. Chin up. Nice. Little bit of smoke underneath, Brian. No, we can't do this with the normal smoke machine. This is so cool. Okay, a little bit more in the head. Okay, take it out. It's literally like a smoking head. <laughs> this is nice. Okay, let's do something that's even nicer. Uh, I was thinking about, when we think about magic, I don't know why, but I think about disco balls. It's ridiculous, of course, but let's try it. Okay, can you hold this one? And now what we want to do is let's first take the shot to make sure that everything looks nice. So I want to focus on the ball from a distance. Of course, I'm going to focus on the model. Okay, there we go. Let's overexpose, uh, let's underexpose this just a little bit. There we go, really like this. We need a little bit more light in the eyes of the model. Of course, I can make my model stand back one step, but in this case, because I want a little bit more room, I'm going to actually move my light. And just let that light a little bit more spread over. Oh, this is nice. Look a little bit more towards the light. That's it. Oh, this is the one. Okay, stretch out your arms. And then look the towards the light. Okay, Brian, can you just put all the smoke on the ball? Okay. That's cool, wow. Okay, let's up the ante a lot. Let's go for a wide angle. Let's go really close to our model. And let's just focus on the ball. There we go. Okay, Brian, do the same thing if you want. Or should we focus on the model? Focus on the ball. Nice. Can I hold it? Let me see if I can do it with one hand and one hand shooting. Okay, focus on my model. Good 
It did not hold, right? Oh, this is nice. Oh, it's very doable with one hand. No, no, no. Getting a lot of Pirates of the Caribbean vibes. Okay, and let's again do it like this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me do it wisely. Let me just switch over for a second. Yeah, but... Um, it's very hard to steer, so Brian, if you can do it again. It's because <laughs> I'm doing it the opposite side, so that's a little bit difficult. I, uh, go on that side, Brian. So we want the red strobe in. Yep, that's nice. Okay, there we go. That's what I want. Lower the ball. Yes. Okay, Brian, do it again. We're almost there. Yeah. Okay, lower, uh, then, then go. There we go, that's what I wanted. Nice, again. I will wait till it's cleared. Yeah, there we go. And go. Okay, what I want, Brian, is start here and then just build it up. Okay, go. Yes, there we go, that's what I need. There we go, we really want that smoke to go up, but not too much. I really like this. Okay. Final shots for this. Let's switch it over again to the big one. And how far are they now, Annabeek? They're like, they're not even, you don't even see how much they are emptied, right? They're still fully. Now I have to correct myself. I told you guys that I thought it was empty. It wasn't. Because when you look at it, it looks like it's empty, but that's actually, you saw how much smoke we already used. <laughs> it's still 100% full, you can't even see. Clear. Yeah, it's 100% clear, and that actually threw me off, because we are using a lot of smoke, and they are really small, and what you're used to with smaller devices is like, they claim a lot of stuff, right? And in most cases, you just press the button, and it should be 10 minutes, and it's like three. In this case, they actually probably make absolutely 100% true, because yeah, there's no nothing left. Uh, no, nothing gone, so really nice. Okay, let's see what I can do if I'm alone. So I have no assistance, and I, and I have to do it myself. So what I would do is I would make sure that it's in front of my strobes. I would make sure that it's in the back. Then I would move to the front, give it a little bit of smoke here. And because I'm alone, I have to do it on the bottom. And then just one very quick in front of her eyes. And take the shot. Okay. Okay. But I think it's nicer when somebody else does it. Or maybe from a distance, let's see. This is too much. And this is because, you remember what I told you guys, right? You need to light smoke from the back. So what I'm doing now is I'm placing too much, tr too much smoke between me and my model. And it needs to be in the back. So I'm going to ask Brian again. Oh, one moment. I turn it off. Sorry. Okay. Just fill up the back nicely. And as you can see here, when it's in the back, you see this. Oh. Yeah. Now I'm a little bit on that side. Uh, don't worry. And a little bit on the front. Nice. That's really cool. A little bit on the bottom, Brian. more there we go this is cool okay look towards the light 
very, very cool. Thank you. Nice. Okay, turn it off. Okay, let's go back to the computer. Thank you so very much, Lois. Okay, let's switch. Uh, Anneli, can you turn the panel back? Oh, uh, let's switch to my camera. Ooh, and there I am. Okay, uh, panel all the way down. In power, on a week, all the way down in power. Yeah, it's Man. One moment, guys. Because we need to turn that power down just. Here we go. Otherwise, I'm too bright. Okay. So, first time ever with these smoke machines. So, let's very quickly go for the results. Um, I'm still using Cascable, as you guys can see. Awesome software to shoot tether to your iPad. Okay, easy. We don't yeah. need to model so anymore? No, we don't need to model anymore. We're done. So this is without, and this is actually where we use the smoke in the head. Now, do remember that if you have more time for this, I'm just doing this for the first time ever. I never tried this before because our smoke machines actually can't do this. So this is something that I was normally not able to do. And I'm pretty sure when I start to experiment with this more, for example, use one smoke machine in the head, one smoke machine to open up the back. I think you can create something really nice, at least very creative. And this I don't like. This is too much smoke on that side. It's too recognizable. And that's what happens when you use very thick smoke. And of course, in this case, it doesn't really matter because it's... Fi uh, let me put it this way. It goes away very fast from this state and it stays very long in that other state. It sounds really weird how I explain it, but you saw it happening. So you know what I mean. It just lingers around very, very long. And that's something that our smoke machines don't do. It disappears pretty fast. Look at all those circles here. That's really nice. So as soon as we started the disco ball, I did add a little bit more contrast. And I think I've still experimented a little bit more with holding it more to the side maybe that you can see the smoke coming off. Like here, I like this a lot more. But again here, we have to just experiment a little bit more with it and just try. But overall, I'm very surprised by the amount of smoke that actually comes off these small machines. And they all run on a battery, so that's also nice for on location. I think we're really going to love using these. Yeah, really nice. And again, it's not perfect by a long shot. Too much smoke. There are some really interesting shots here. And this is where I tried it alone. Uh, alone is always difficult because with smoke, you have to, to... What I do with smoke, I just look through the viewfinder and as soon as I see something that I like, I press that button and then we have to shut, of course. And when you do the smoke yourself, you just can't control it enough. So you really need an assistant for this. Luckily, we have those. Okay, cool. Let's switch back to the camera. Okay. So overall, the big machine and the smaller machine. So what are my final thoughts on these? I can't give you those yet because I don't have a final thought yet. We have to experiment a little bit more with them. I think, in all honesty, the bigger one, when you compare it to what you get with it, and especially the, the fan, this is really, really something that I would strongly advise to get the bigger one. If you are doing model photography or bigger subjects, I think this one really makes a difference because the fan is adjustable in three settings. It's chargeable by USB-C. We tried it out at home and the fan actually also works while charging. That's very important because when you're in a shoot and your battery dies, you need a three hour charging time. So that means that if you can also use it while being plugged in with a USB-C cord, that's a big plus. 
I think the design is really nice. You have this protection that you don't hurt your hands when you uh, touch the, the hot stuff. It is a little, I'm gonna show you that I don't lie. And we didn't fill it up. She wanted to do it, but she saw that it was actually, look at this, all the smoke that we used. It's like there's nothing gone. Wow. Let me see the other one. Let me try that one. This one we used a little bit more because I also tried this one very quickly before the broadcast. Well, that's very doable. Okay, um, again, do always use an attachment because otherwise it just spills out a little bit of that fluid and you don't want that in your model's face or in your own face for that matter, of course. And it fits all very nicely together. It feels very sturdy, by the way. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break very easily. And that's of course, especially with portable stuff, that's very important. Okay, let's go back to my camera. Okay, when you buy the kit, you get six bottles of fluid, 12 milliliters, and that should be enough for one filling. Now, I tried to do one in the, the container, and I couldn't empty it completely, so there was like a 10% left. I think over time, maybe you can fill it up if you get a little bit more acquainted with it, but I couldn't fill it up 100%, so every time I fill it up, I have a little bit left, and that's a good thing, right? It's better than if you have a little bit less. Okay, so these are the original packaging. Any week, do you have any pricing on them? It's from Lensgo, of course. I know the B is one ninety nine. Okay, the B, that's the big one, the is big one, one. The big one is one ninety nine. Yeah. Oh wow, and that's including the fan. Uh, yeah, that's this box. Are you absolutely sure that's one hundred and ninety nine sure. dollars? Yeah. Euros. Euros. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I'm a little bit surprised. I actually thought, I heard the price of 199, and I actually thought it was for this one. Now I'm gonna tell you why I thought that. On the, on the uh, photo days in Belgium, you saw me using a similar product, actually also with a little bit of an attachment like this. And that one was, including the fan, almost 750 euros. At that point, I told myself like, hey, this is really nice. But for 750 euros, I can buy six of my own smoke machines. And I'm not gonna use it that much on location. But Enneweek is now looking it up. If this is really 199 euros, including the fan Enneweek, that's, I can highly recommend it. Even for model photography, if you think like you need a big smoke machine, for that amount of money, get it. So she's looking it up. Well, you can look it up online yourself. <laughs> So, and we can't find it. But the remote control added bonus, uh, you can mount it on a stand. The small one is only 129. Okay, the small one is 129. The S. the S is 129, and the bigger one is 199. Yeah, 99, yeah. Including the fan thingy. Do I have to send them back? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If I drop them, can I keep them? You see, I'm, I'm really enthusiastic about it. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, in all honesty, because I didn't hear the pricing, but hey, that, that's a nice price. Okay, hey, uh, let me see in the chat if there are any questions. Oh, there are a lot of questions. Um, is the fluid water-based or oil-based? That's a good one. Um, rook is snel weg. Okay, another one. I saw a question of oil on water-based, oil-based according to specification in camera land. It's not good for your camera lenses because of the residue. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me talk about that for a second. And I have to figure that out myself yet. So, if you look at smoke machines, there are oil-based smoke machines and there are smoke machines based on water. Now, over the years, I've always advised to use water-based smoke machines and I'm still convinced that those, water machine, or those uh, smoke machines are 100% the best. For the very simple reason, you don't want any residue on your strobes or on your cameras. Now, on your cameras, it's not that big of a problem, but especially on your strobes. Now, let me explain. If you have strobes that use a fan, which most strobes do, they actually take in the air and also put the air out again. Now, when you use a water-based smoke machine, it uses water molecules. And that's not a real problem because we breathe them in all the time. So we don't have any problems with water. So it already goes through your strobes. So maybe if you use a water-based smoke machine, it goes a little bit more through your strobes, but it won't hurt the strobes. Now, oil-based smoke machines are totally different. 
there's always a little bit of that residue in the smoke. Now, when I look at the compartment, and I'm not a chemist, so I'm just going to tell you very honestly what's in it. Uh, I, I have no connection with the company, by the way. They send it to me. I test it out. I'm very enthusiastic, so I have no reason to... Uh, I think it's oil to, to give because wrong oil. information, but let me see. Ingredients are VG vegetable glycerin and PG propylene glycinol. Now, if there's somebody online that really knows about that stuff, just let me know. I think it's, maybe it's not 100% oil-based like the big smoke machines, but I think it will leave a, ref, uh, a residue. Also, when I look at my desk at the moment, uh, it's not really bad. But it does leave a little bit of a residue, but it's not oily. It's more like a dust, so. It's safe for food. Yeah, they say it's safe for food. Uh, again, I don't know about the smoke, uh, about the, the strobes. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, because with our big smoke machines, we use a lot of smoke. This is very centralized. Th the best tip I can give you is I'm not a big fan of leaving res uh, residues. I have to be totally honest with that. I think I would just... Just for safekeeping, keep it away from strobes that have fans. So, in other words, with our strobes, we don't have the fans on at the moment because, well, they're not heating up. So, with our strobes, there's probably no problem. I would be a little bit careful by using it on very expensive gear or guitars or something that's really sensitive, like maybe a tube amp. It looks nice if the smoke comes out, but I wouldn't use it on that until you know for certain it doesn't leave any residue. So overall, yeah, not a big fan of residue, but in this case, I think it fits the purpose perfectly. So um, we find yeah, we will find out for you guys and we will do that in a short. But overall, I think it's nothing to worry about. With the big smoke machines, yes, because you pump in a lot of smoke. This is very centralized, so I, th I think, think you will be okay. Let me see if there's another question. Um, it's food grade glycerin, somebody says. Okay, and Joe, can you confirm that that's not bad for your strokes? because I'm really anxious about that too. Um, let me see. Uh, okay. Um, Ron actually said the smoke is gone very quickly. Uh, yes and no. Uh, the, the thing is, when you look at a normal smoke machine, it comes in, it looks really nice. You have to shoot it very fast, and then it becomes vapor. And with the vapor, I always have something like, it, it fills up, it gives you a lot of light, but it really doesn't give you that smoke effect, if you know what I mean. With this one, the weird thing is, is that it becomes very fluid at first. So you see all those lines, then those lines disappear and you don't get vapor, but you get a really nice photography grade smoke. And it just lingers on a little bit longer than a normal smoke machine. Maybe that is because it's using glycerin instead of water. But I think this one is a little bit easier to photograph. And you saw that in those images we took of Lois in the end, I'm using a lot less smoke than normally. I think with our normal smoke machines, we use at least two or three times as many as much smoke. So the whole area is filled up with smoke, and then you really see that. With this one, it really surprised me that you just need a little bit of smoke, and it already shows up on your images. So overall, yeah, again, nice. Let me see if there are more questions. Okay, so we're going to find out for you guys if it's bad for your cameras. And overall, even if they say it's not bad for your cameras, uh, as soon as I see something that's not water-based, my advice is just keep it away from strobes that have fans. But don't worry too much. It is designed for photography, so I guess it will be okay. And remember, those oil-based smoke machines we're talking about are not designed for photography. Those smoke machines are designed for discotheques theaters, clubs, live concerts, and whatnot more. And they don't think about protecting your gear. This stuff is designed for photography. So I guess, in their mind, they are protecting your gear and using the proper stuff that won't leave any residue. But again, we're going to find that out. Because I think for a lot of guys, it's really important. We will be doing a short this weekend about it. I'm going to shoot some uh, guitar stuff and some uh, Batman figurines or whatever with it, because I really like the way that it sticks to the floor. I think we can do something creative with it. So those videos will be online next week, and next week we will also do a small write-up on social media about uh, the residue uh, questions we have, and of course some other stuff. If there are any more questions, no. <laughs> uh, let me see. Zou je ook een zware vape kunnen gebruiken? Rolf, yes. Um, I don't think you can use a vaporizer for this. Um, 
uh, without going into too much detail, a vaporizer is used for herbs to heat them up to 190 to 20 degrees and to inhale that uh, stuff. Um, when you look at a vaporizer, it doesn't really have a fan. Some of the table models will have a fan where you can get a little bit of extra smoke, but even on the fullest setting, that will just give you just a puff of smoke. This one really gives you a lot more power than a vaporizer. So where a vaporizer just gives you like, like setting 0.1, this one gives you power 10. So I don't think a vaporizer will work. And the other thing is, how will you get the fluid into a vaporizer? Now, if you think about using the nicotine stuff, I would highly, highly recommend against that. Not only for the health of yourself and your model, but also for your strokes. Nicotine is very, very sticky, and it will stick also to your strokes and make everything look a little bit yellow. So, in, I, I, yeah, I think it's also in those uh, vaporizers. So, no, I won't use a vaporizer. And also, this is a lot bigger than, for example, a Mighty or a Crafty. So, yeah. A lot more power and a lot more battery. So overall, no, <laughs> I wouldn't use, and I wouldn't smoke this. I think, <laughs> don't think that will be. It looks nice, but no. Okay, if there are no more questions, <laughs> I will. I don't smoke. No, me neither. I also. Don't. I I'm a big anti-smoker. So yeah, I don't. Um, I'm in the meantime. I'm trying to get this, and this is really nice. It just fits so nicely together. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we're gonna uh, quit for today. So next week, we're going to show you the shorts with some more product photography. In between, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. The residue questions we are going to ask. And a week still has a question. The next digital classroom is about modifiers. Yeah, the next digital classroom. You guys ask for it, you're going to get it. Uh, we're going to talk about modifiers. I'm going to show you what a strip light does, what a softbox does, what a bigger softbox does, what a grid does, what a reflector does, what a deep reflector does, a snoot, a beauty dish. What do we have more? The rogue system, the flash bender. I hope I'm going to fit that all in two hours. <laughs> We're going to do it really fast. We're just going to show you the same backdrop. And just every time I'm going to change the modifiers, I'm going to show you how much more light comes out of it, the quality of the light, and whatnot more. And we're going to use probably not even a model. We're just going to use uh, a mannequin so you can literally just see the difference straight on. Because if we have a model, the model just moves around, and that will just destroy the way that it looks. So we're just going to place a doll over here, and we're just going to shoot it with different modifiers. So a boring digital classroom for photography but a very interesting uh, digital classroom to see what all those different modifiers do. So join us for the next digital classroom. And when is the next digital classroom, Anna Week? It's December. Somewhere in December. On a Wednesday, some, some, on a Wednesday somewhere in December. <laughs> and another thing, tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big day. Tomorrow is an exciting day. And I don't know if we're going to go live. Maybe we're going to go live for a very short time. Tomorrow, Carbon Black is in. Now, you all know that we love tethering over here, and we use IQ wire cables. And today is probably the last time you saw me shooting with the red cables. Because you guys ask for it, you guys are going to get it. We have black cables, and we don't have shiny black cables. And we actually have carbon black cables, so very, very nice cables for in the studio. No reflections, so even for your product and food photographers, you don't see the cable anymore. And the biggest thing, we're not going to deliver just 5 meters. And we're not going to deliver just 10 meters. We're not going to deliver just 15 meters. We're even going to deliver longer. And you might wonder why longer. Well, the cables are now 15 meters in one piece. So we're not going to connect them together. We have one cable of 15 meters. But we have a new cable defense system where you can actually use pigtails. So that means that your 15 meters becomes a little bit over 15 meters. And that sounds nicer, 15 plus meters. So we're going to get them in tomorrow. We're going to show you that stuff all next week. So next week is going to be a really exciting week on YouTube for us. So join us, subscribe, hit that bell notification because you don't want to miss anything of the news next week. We're going to do the videos in Dutch and we're going to do the videos in English. So if you see the video in Dutch, don't panic. The English video will be there at the same time. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. I'm going to smoke out of here. And if you don't hear from me again, I'm, I've gone up in smoke, I guess. What do you think in a week? <laughs> Are we going to retouch some of those images and you're going to see those online in the next week. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. And make sure you check out those LensGo. Don't pay too much because for this price, you get a lot of products. Yeah.
We will put them on our web shop so you can buy them from us. Again, we're not affiliated by Le with LensGo in any way. They're not sponsors of us. They just send us the gear. We love it. And that's the moment when we also put it on our web shop, if we are allowed, of course. So we have to figure that out. Okay, that was it. So thank you so very much for watching, guys. Thanks, Lois. And thanks, Anna Week and Brian for assisting. And see you again next time. Bye, guys.